If you're looking for a miracle working plugin that can change your snare from a lifeless smack like this into this, watch the rest of this video. Welcome back to another Tuesday Review Day. Today we're taking a look at the Waves Factory Snare Buzz. It was a really cool plugin I found when I was scrolling through the free section of Plugin Boutique, looking for ideas and, and new plugins to try out, new styles of plugins to try out. Initially, when I saw the Snare Buzz, I was thinking like, oh, this isn't gonna be that interesting. It looks like something just for sample related. But once I read into it a little bit more and learned what all it had to offer, I was like, you know what, I'll bite. Let, let's see what this sounds like. Within five minutes of turning it on, I, I was pretty impressed. It was it was, a, it was a cool plugin. Like I said in the intro, it adds a lot of character to a snare. It gets rid of just a boring smack and gives it some life, gives it some energy. When you record a snare in many environments, you will be top and bottom miking the snare. The whole point of the bottom mic is to pick up the sounds of the snare rattling against the bottom head. This is what gives the snare a little bit of character beyond just a basic hit. But sometimes you don't get a sound you like of the bottom snare hits, or, or maybe you're working with samples where they didn't have a snare bottom option, or perhaps the drummer you were working with just didn't have snare wires on the bottom of their snare for some odd reason. Whatever the case may be, the snare buzz is a really cool way to fix any of that sound. Like I said in the beginning of the video, it adds a lot of character. The whole point of it is to add that rattle of the snare head. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this plugin. So on the basic aesthetic of it, it's got a beautiful looking image here. It's got the snare and a nice looking treated room and a classic SM57 miking the snare. One thing that I love about plugins is I like when I can resize the plugin just to, to fill my window and make it easier to look at the finer details of how I'm doing things. So I always notice whenever I can resize a plugin. On the bottom right here, you have these three lines. You can either enlarge or minimize the snare buzz. We're going to leave it big just so everyone can actually see everything clearly. But you only have four knobs. You have tightness, mic distance, mix, and out. So mix and out are basic. It's how much of a percentage of the snare buzz is on the signal of the plugin chain, as well as out just controlling the out level of the plugin itself. So we saw it in the intro, but we're going to take a look at what the snare sounds like. I have a small plugin chain going on it. I have the REQ6, the CLA28, and the L1 limiter uh, just to, to level it out and give it a little bit of EQ to help out with it. So let's take a listen without the snare buzz and then we'll go through some of the settings. All right, basic snare. Sounds like a snare. Well, duh. And we're going to play that same section and you'll notice in the downtimes when the snare isn't being hit, you'll hear a little bit of the buzz. So it sounds really cool. It completely changes the sound of your snare in a good way. And you can change the settings, of course. You actually have five snare types that you can go through. I found the first two are probably my two favorites, as well as different studio rooms. It'd be cool if the image of the room kind of changed to match the environment that it was supposed to be emulating. But beggars can't be choosers on a free plugin. For a free plugin, this is way more than you would ever expect. So for the tightness, it has to do with how tight the snare rattle is going to be. The tighter it is, the shorter of a rattle you are going to have the looser it is, the more rattle you're going to get from the snare. For an example, we'll go all the way loose and then all the way tight, and you'll notice the difference here. I really like how it sounds. I think it sounds really cool. Like I said, it adds so much body and character to the snare that you wouldn't otherwise have. You can have a lot of really dead snares that just need some sort of accent, some sort of life breathed into it, and the snare buzz can do it beautifully. One other really cool feature that you have is you can control the mic distance. So the mic distance almost works like the mix option here. It controls how much of the snare buzz is actually being used and how intense it's going to be. The closer the mic is, the more more intense of a buzz and rattle you're going to get, the farther away it is, the less you're going to have. But like I said, snare one and snare two are probably my two favorites. I normally stick with studio one for the room. One last cool feature about the mic distance is that you can control it here, but if you bring your cursor up here, you can control the position 
by just clicking and dragging with your mouse. I don't know, little things like that are really cool to me. I like it when it's an interactive image like that. So lastly, I want you guys to hear what every option sounds like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick with Studio One Room and we're gonna cycle through all of the snare options. And then after we've gone through all five of those, we're going to stick with just snare one and cycle through all five of the room options. Just to make it easier to tell the differences between the rooms, I'm going to back the mic all the way away from the snare. Then it picks up more of the room sound and not so much just the snare up close. So that's pretty much it for the snare buzz. The only thing that I would like to see as an improvement in the future from Waves Factory, if there's ever an update, is there to be a undo button. There will be times that I really like a sound that I get and I'm like wanting to experiment a little bit more and I won't pay attention to the settings that I had chosen. And I'll go forward and I'll do a bunch of changes and then I'll realize I should have just stuck with what I had. But that's not that big of a deal. In all honesty, this plugin is a beautiful piece of work. I can't believe it's free. This is a plugin that I wish I had in all of my learning when I was working on my mixing abilities. Waves Factory, you made a bomb with this one. This thing is insane. This is going to be staying in my plugin folder. I'm going to be pulling this out for some sessions in the future. I just know it. But everything from the aesthetics right down to the actual capabilities and usefulness of this plugin, it is a 10 out of 10. Make sure you guys leave a like and comment down below and subscribe. It would really help me out. I would love to know about any plugins that you guys want my opinions of, anything that I can try out in the future. But with that being said, thank you for watching.